Well, first and foremost, I want to continue to extend my condolences to the Mancuso family in this tragic incident that occurred on February 24th of 2024. I also want to extend and commend my uh, commend to the community witnesses that brought forth information, the MCSO investigators, our crime lab, our forensic staff, for the continuous work and commitment involving this investigation and MCAO for helping us with bringing this case to a close to justice. On February 24th, 2024, approximately 10 o'clock in the morning, a gray Ford F-250 long bed truck was traveling eastbound on Cloud Road, east of 7th Avenue in Phoenix, Arizona. While traveling eastbound, the truck drove into a uh, onto the dirt shoulder alongside the roadway and struck a pedestrian who was jogging alongside the road. The pedestrian was later pronounced deceased on scene. She was identified as Lisa Mancuso. After striking Miss Mancuso, witnesses called in this incident relating that the truck was observed fleeing the scene eastbound on Cloud Road. Further witness information indicated that the truck returned back to the scene, the driver got out of the vehicle, and then got back in, made a U-turn, and left the scene again. Some of the witnesses attempted to stop or intervene. The, continue, the truck continued to go eastbound, I'm sorry, westbound on, sorry, eastbound on Cloud Road. MCSO patrol and vehicular crimes were called into the scene a uh, little after the incident occurred. They circulated the area, they could not locate the vehicle, so they began processing the, the evidence and obviously um, dealing with Ms. Mancuso and her family at that point in time. As they were doing so, about 2.45 in the afternoon, MCSO dispatch received a call from a caller who stated they believed that the vehicle involved in the fatal accident was a member of his family's, or belonged to a member of his family, and was in his driveway and noticed that it was not parked in its normal uh, position. Investigation re revealed that the driver of the vehicle was that of 20-year-old Jacob Moore, and that he had been up all that night, that evening, before and consuming alcoholic beverages. Witness accounts and digital evidence supported that Mr. Moore was impaired during the time of the vehicle collision, and a warrant was issued for his arrest and as a result turned himself in and was booked into MCSO intake facility on one count of second degree murder, one count of leaving the scene of a fatal collision yesterday evening. I can tell you that I know there was a lot of questions of the length of the investigation. Our staff worked nonstop around the clock to process not only the scene, but obviously when there's a hit and run accident, it compounds things where there's multiple locations, uh, other evidence that was involved in this. There were other witness accounts. Our staff had to go through and interview all those witnesses. They had to go through digital evidence, cell phone evidence, video evidence, not only where the scene was, but even the night of the event to be able to process that and present that to the county attorney. At the end of the day, we want to make sure we have an uh, investigation that's solid and has a conviction to be able to bring justice and closure for the family. Very tragic incident. Both these families will be impacted for the rest of their lives by this. And we want to continue to make sure that we provide the best investigation so that we have a solid case uh, to be able to present to MCAO. That person, Mr. Moore, is in custody at this point after being booked in last night. And I can tell you that MCSO is dedicated to the continuing our educational programs and our enforcement programs to deal with traffic safety and public safety on our roadways. As you know, too, this was our second fatality in a short span of time up in the northeast area of Maricopa County. And we continue our efforts to make sure that we are dealing with those issues to help keep the speeders, the traffic incidents down, and provide the education and enforcement that's needed. At this time, that's uh, the briefing and overview. I can answer maybe a few questions. If there's detailed ones, I'll probably refer you over to the media group. Well, just talking about, you just mentioned the, the length of time of the investigation there. Uh, knowing that Jacob Moore is related to a law enforcement officer, did he receive any preferential treatment here? The, the length of this investigation, he wasn't related to a law enforcement officer. Would he have been arrested quicker? No, he did not receive any preferential treatment. I can say I can cite the other fatal accident that occurred 
earlier around December of last year, the end of last year, you saw how long that one took. There is a lot that goes into investigating a traffic fatality. It isn't just a normal vehicle collision where things are left on scene and we process and document. Obviously, we're talking to the fatality of an individual. This is a homicide. And we want to make sure, just like with any homicide, those cases don't get solved overnight generally. We have to make sure we're doing a thorough investigation. There's a lot of man hours uh, involved in these type of cases where we have to process the evidence at the scene. We have to go through with digital evidence. Pe people particularly have cell phones that has di digital evidence in it. Uh, vehicles now have a lot of onboard computer systems that we have to download and go through. Sometimes those take subpoena and warrants also to go through. We also have to look what led up to that in case in, in this circumstance where there was intoxication believed to be involved, um, going where maybe that person traveled that night, getting witness accounts. There were five people involved in you know, witness accounts just generally right there, but let alone what saw the incident that were community members that brought forward information. So it's a comprehensive investigation, and I tell you that the staff work day in, day out to bring conclusion and closure because we know we have family members out there seeking that. We want to do the best job possible. Sheriff Skinner, we got an anonymous tip that he was being served at a local cafe called Heart and Soul. Can you confirm that? I can't confirm the name. Uh, I know that he was potentially at several different venues that night, and obviously we collected that evidence or, or interviewed people that may have had contact with him during that evening. Was he perhaps being served while underage? Uh, as far as I know, yes, he's, well, he's 20 years old is what I've been informed, so that is under the legal limits of alcohol, and so certainly that would uh, compound the issue a little bit. Will you be investigating those restaurants or bars that he was at? I can tell you that we have a very good partnership with the Liquor Board, and certainly we will work with the Liquor Board. I know those are the type of things that uh, Liquor Control will definitely follow up on uh, as a result of a fatal accident. We see that a lot with the wrong way drivers going on out there, and we have a strong partnership that we will make sure that we provide everything that we have in our investigation for them to, to look into that. Can you specify when Jacob Moore became the suspect um, in the investigation and when the warrant was served? I will say we had, um, we had some information later in the afternoon that potentially he was involved. But the thing you have to think about with leaving the scene of the accident is placing that person behind the wheel. So we needed to make sure that we had the solid evidence that he, in fact, was the driver of that vehicle, which our evidence has yielded that indication. So how long between... Um when the warrant, when you were going to arrest him versus him surrendering? Oh, I believe the warrant was issued. Yes, yeah, I believe the it, it warrant was issued late yesterday afternoon or mid afternoon, and he turned himself in. I believe around 4:45 yesterday, 4:30 yesterday. Were there any friends with him in the car at the time of the collision, or who saw him leave these restaurants? There were other witnesses that did come forward, or that we did interview, that we learned were involved. Some in the vehicle, some at other locations that he had been at through the night. So we know he was at at least, just what we've heard in court as well, that he was at, being served at least at one place, but you're saying there's, uh, there's video evidence, I believe 9.30 the night before, what, was that also at an establishment, was that at somebody's house? I believe there was a combination of a few potential places that do serve alcohol and potentially at other locations that are either residential or associates. And knowing that there's surveillance video, you have evidence in at you know 9:30 at night all the way until the morning. Do you have other establishments throughout the day, or is it just sort of that start and end? I believe it's throughout the evening. We have quite a few uh, points of video, and again, that may not just be at the establishment. If they're driving down the road, um, you know, traffic cameras out there, any anything that we could get evidence on. We, we collected to make sure that we had it. And that's part of, again, the lengthy investigation. We wanted to see from start to finish that evening what occurred so that we could replicate that and make sure that we had enough uh, to, to relay in, in involving his behavior and beha involving the incident itself. Well, you, you mentioned a family member making a call saying they saw the truck. Um, with all the witnesses, but specifically with families, everybody been fairly cooperative throughout this investigation? Yes, I will say again, the call came in as we were still processing the scene. The call came in from that family member to relay the information that he believed that that, that particular vehicle that belonged to his family member was involved in the fatal incident and so obviously tied it right into that and been cooperative at that point.
The judge said in court that was his father. Is that true? Uh, as far as I know, yes. Who was the one who made the call? Is that the law enforcement officer that I, the car's registered? To? I believe so, yes, sir. Can you say who that is? Uh, at this point, it has no bearing in the investigation. I will tell you that the cooperation was there, and the fact of what somebody does for a living doesn't play a role. Uh, it, you know, obviously, we're focused on the suspect and we're focused on the victim's family at this point, and the witnesses involved. Uh, in court, uh, the attorney for Jacob Moore said it was a circumstantial case. How do you respond to that? Um, you know, again, I don't know that circumstantial, I mean, that might be an opinion of somebody's. What we have is a tragic incident that occurred where alcohol we know was involved, where obviously lots of alcohol was involved, and a person died as a result of that. Um, our streets are dangerous enough in Maricopa County without impairment, with speeding and other violations. I will say that, you know, that isn't circumstances. There's behavior patterns and there's the responsibility of being somebody behind the wheel and having the alertness to make sure that you're driving safe behind the wheel and that you're carrying out what is expected of you in, in traveling down those roadways. Does it make an investigation like this more difficult when you can't get a BAC level that night? Yeah, I would say it does and it doesn't because, again, I, there is enough evidence supporting the fact that uh, a large amount of alcohol was consumed over the course of the evening and uh, certainly there's enough that working with the county attorney that will will show that in, in the warrant that was issued. Is there a reason why there aren't any DUI charges uh, as of now? Right now it's, we consider this a homicide so obviously the homicide is much more elevated than just a DUI. Um, at this point the DUI obviously compounds that. It does not mitigate it by any means. It compounds it and certainly we're looking for the homicide charge, second degree homicide and uh, leaving the scene of a fatal accident which are Pretty, you know, pretty substantial charges. We received a tip from a neighbor saying that his friends that were with him at the time of the crash actually carried him out of the restaurant and was passed out. Can you say whether or not that's true? Are you investigating that? It, it, I'm sure it was part of the investigation and I'll refer specific, if there's specific details, it was a pretty lengthy report. Um, I wasn't able to capture everything out of it, but I would say that if that's something that's being relayed to, we can certainly confirm that through the investigative report that was uh, drafted. And then, um, was he made aware that there was a warrant out for his arrest before he self-surrendered? That I don't, I, that I don't know for sure. Um, again, I, the county attorney was the one that reviewed the case and then the warrant would go be issued by them through the, the judicial system. So I'm not sure what their procedure is, is maybe contacting them or not, but I, I'm not aware. Has, the, has your office had an opportunity or yourself had an opportunity to speak with the Mancuso family about the development? I haven't personally, but I know the investigators have uh, reached out and have continued to reach out uh, in the course of investigation. Does Jacob live at home with his parents? I can't say that for a fact. I, that's something I don't know. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. No, oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And again, just one more thing is just, you know, MCSO is committed to make sure that we continue to our enforcement efforts and educational efforts along with all our valley partnerships out there through Governor's Office of Highway Safety and uh, the other agencies. You just saw uh, West Valley spin off on some of the issues they're dealing with. Please just, you know, from a community perspective, as much as we can get out there educationally and slow people down and make sure that they're right behind the wheel and stop impairment. That uh, This is going to be a tragedy that lives forever for those, these two families. And if we can prevent that, then we've done our job. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.